You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to My Strategy with author and personal growth coach John M. Hawkins. John will provide coaching and inspiration, motivation and advice on your personal development in order to help you with the best decision making possible. So now, please welcome the host of My Strategy, John M. Hawkins. Hello, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Our episodes are live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're the show that focuses on personal development. Very happy to be here with you today. Saturday is a great day of the week to reflect on your prior week and think about all we've accomplished and our plans for the upcoming week. But keep in mind that any time is a good time to assess your personal development strategy. And that's what we do here on the My Strategy Radio Show. Our My Strategy Radio Show continues to grow. We're on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more digital platforms. So if you'd like to listen to one of our shows and podcasts, you can find them out there. You can find me on most social media platforms. My Twitter handle is at Hawkins John. My website is John M. Hawkins. So John M. Hawkins. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. This week, I'm looking for stories about hope. Do you have any good examples, perhaps a tip or a trick? You can send those to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Well, today we're going to be talking about hope and finding hope in times of doubt. Hopelessness can make it very difficult to change. Hope does have a downside, which can lead to defeated hope and hopelessness. But hope overall can be beneficial for us. But sometimes we do lose all hope. We'll talk a little bit about ways that we can rekindle our hope by receiving it, finding community, expressing our feelings, and looking at the bigger picture. What is hope? Hope means to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen or be true. One hopes for a promotion. One could hope for the best. We hope so. Hope means to desire with expectation of obtainment or fulfillment. I hope she remembers. I hope to be invited. To expect with confidence or trust. I hope your mother is doing well. To hope without basis for expecting fulfillment. Desire accompanied by expectation of belief in fulfillment. They came in hopes of seeing you. Hope means a lot of things to a lot of different people. I want to start off by talking about finding hope. I've got an article here by Davia Sills. She starts by saying, in 1965, Martin Seligman discovered learned helplessness. He found that when animals are subjected to difficult situations which they cannot control, these animals would stop trying to escape They became passive. Human beings are the same. If you experience devastating defeats, a persistent situation that you can't change, or a terrifying event that you could not control your exposure to, 
then you may have lost hope for your ability to change your life or change a painful situation. Sometimes an ongoing mood disorder can lead to feelings of hopelessness. Apathy or hopelessness may be puzzling to those around you. Why wouldn't you try to get a job, make friends, eat healthier, or leave someone who is abusive? When you have no hope, you see any efforts to change your life as futile. You blame yourself. You might say that you cannot manage life, cannot manage friends, cannot succeed in getting a job. You accept whatever happens as beyond your control. You begin to despair. I think it's important for us as we focus on our personal development to be aware of hope and hopelessness. And as we go through today's show, think about where you are on the hope spectrum. Do you believe and have hope? Are you positive and optimistic that things will get better? Or have you had so many hopes, beliefs, goals disappear in front of you, and as a result, you feel helpless and not in control? That's what we're exploring today. Because when you don't have any hope, you don't have energy, you don't have motivation, or you don't have the desire to change your situation. And as we focus on our personal development, we all want to affect change in our lives. We all want to be that better person. We want to change who we are or perhaps continue who we are. And that's what we need to be focusing on with regard to hope. Because hope can lead to despair and resignation if you don't deal with life situations accordingly. And no hope, no belief in therapy or any action that you will take will make any difference may lead to a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the author goes on to talk a little bit about hopelessness, and they come up with some ideas for us to find hope. The first is find a clear path by being able to see the steps you are taking will lead to a desired change is critical to having hope. If you don't logically see what you are doing can have a positive result, then carrying out the plan will likely be very difficult. Write down each step you need to take to get where you want to be. And I like that plan. You know, we talk about journaling on this show, having clarity and writing out the plan, writing down the short term steps, the near term steps, the long term steps can help you see this plan, see what it is that you need to do to get to your future goal. They also suggest looking for role models who have found solutions that are similar to the situations that you are in. Why not learn from somebody who has experienced a similar problem? Ask what they did. Do what you know you can do. I like this one. Focus on those things that you're good at. Focus on those things that give you confidence that when you complete those tasks or those activities, you will start to gain success and more success. I also talk about performing an act of kindness to someone else and turning to faith when needed. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the downside of hope and how defeated hope can lead to hopelessness. We'll be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, 
examples and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Huckins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're well, very happy to be here with you today and glad you can join us. Right before the break, we were talking about hopelessness and how it can be difficult to make steps towards change. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the downside of hope. And how hope perhaps might not be as good as we thought. I've got an article here by Ukiah Hagen. Talks about the downsides of hope. Ukiah starts out by saying, Defeated hope can lead to hopelessness. Throughout history, hope has been viewed favorably as virtually essential to our welfare. Many writers have weighed in against false hope, but it's generally been perceived as positive, almost essential, a motivating force. And in any case, it seems inextricably woven into the fabric of human nature. You guys just take the famous line from the 18th century English poet, Alexander Pope, where Pope says, hope springs eternal in the human breast. And far more recently, writing for Blogspot, a physician in training named Isaac suggests pretty much the same thing. Though here is the tone is unquestionably cynical towards this abiding universal tendency. It says, I hate the word hope. It is a cruel and bitter emotion that won't leave you alone. In meditation, one is taught to let go of attachments to emotions. I can often do that with anger and grief and anxiety, but not with hope. I despise it because even if I let it go, hope never lets go of me. As other writers as well have investigated the darker side of hope, elaborating on how it can actually ensnare you and far more than you might think. So it's of considerable practical value to explore the often unrecognized problems with such a curiosity, optimism or aspirational emotion. I guess think about that. Is that true? Is hope something that we do not have the ability to let go. It is this optimism that perhaps could blind us to the reality. He kind of continues. In reviewing the literature on this most paradoxical of subjects, I've come up with no fewer than seven downsides related to hope. All of them merit scrutiny since it is crucial to distinguish between good hope and bad hope. Simply put, not all hope deserves to be regarded as advantageous, as an asset. 
And because its positive facets are more publicized than its adverse ones, this post will focus on why it's a good idea to be mindful and how certain kinds of hope, as well as degrees of hope, can wind up defeating you. For the acclaimed German philosopher Nietzsche admittedly overstated the case. Hope is the reality, is the worst of all evils because it prolongs the torments of man. So I think as we think about our personal development strategy and this show and what we're focusing on, as many of you are aware, we explore the spectrum of these of, of these concepts. So hope can be good, but hope also can be bad. And from our perspective, we need to be thinking about our own personal strategy. We want to think strategically, but act tactically. And during this show, we want to start to think about hope as a tool and as a way that we can, by properly reining in our hopes and aspirations, setting them appropriately in context of reality, it will give us a better chance for success. So let's explore some of these. Number one, hope can be inherently biased ideal. Yukai says overall it's better to have a positive or optimistic bias than a stubbornly negative one. But ideally, when we make an evaluation or come to a conclusion, we ought to base our judgment on logic and rationality rather than hope. Hope can lead, can set us up for disappointment and defeat. The emotion of hope pertains to that which hasn't yet transpired. So it's only natural that the more favorable of our expectations of the future, the greater will be our disappointment or disillusion when expectations aren't met or irrevocably crushed. I can say this is true in today's day and age, in today's time. Over the past year, think of all the things that have happened to us in this country, to this world, and how has hope played a factor in it? How has hope played a factor if you had lost your job and were hoping for a new one, and it's been 14 months and you've not gotten that job or not been able to go back to work? Number three, hope can hamper us from adequately preparing for negative outcomes. A flexible, forward-looking mindset is always preferable to a rigid, fixed one. But there are many situations in which realistic acceptance of a possibility or likely negative outcome is more beneficial than clinging to hope counter to what is quite probably, if not certainly, going to happen. So that's a great question. What if you have hope that something is going to happen? And it never does happen. How will you feel? Hope can hamper us from adequately preparing for these negative outcomes. Hope can be like a prayer, like a wish, wishing for something rather than forcefully working towards it. Not always, but definitely sometimes hope inhibits taking necessary or advisable action. That in hoping or praying for something doesn't itself imply doing it. Rather, it can keep you in a holding pattern rather than helping you to achieve it. She goes on to talk about more. One of the things she does say here is that hope can encourage you to forfeit personal power and control. And I think that's a good one to end on because at the end of the day, when it comes to our personal development strategy, we need to be in control. It is not okay for us to forfeit our control. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, we talked about the downsides of hope. In the next segment, we're going to talk about its benefits. We'll be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, 
natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop. Empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this edition of My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Today, we're talking about hope and finding hope in times of doubt. Right before the break, we were talking about the downsides of hope and how having hope can lead to hopelessness. Keeping in mind that this program is all about personal development. And in order for us to provide an unbiased view, we have to show you all sides. So there's downsides of hope. But knowing that there are downsides in hope doesn't mean that hope isn't a good strategy that we can use. So in this segment, I want to explore the benefits of hope and how hope Hope can help us. Got an article here from Ayushi Kapoor. Ayushi talks about the benefits of hope and why they are important. Ayushi says, whenever we talk about optimism, pessimism, and realism, hope is related to these words. Ayushi says, hope as an acronym, so in Hoshi's opinion, stands for, H stands for hanging, O stands for onto, P stands for positive, and E stands for expectations. And by the way, I do think it's great to create little acronyms for words that we have, because when you you look at a word and you know the definition, that's a definition, it means something to us, But when you take that word and add additional dimension to it, as Ayushi did, it makes it real. So when you think about the word hope, there's more context to it. So I like this little strategy. I'm going to be thinking about that for this week. Ayushi continues by saying hope helps us to control our emotions, improves immunity, alleviates our overall health reduces stress, and most importantly, improves your breathing. Hope is the only word that has more values and worth from other words. There's a famous saying that there is life when there is hope. Talks about some of the benefits of why we should be having hope and why it's important to have in our lives. Can help you create your self-worth reduce stress and anxiety, improve professional and social relationships, lead us on the road of positivity. A simple hope makes our day happy and cheerful, and research shows that hope in its own importance in life has its own importance in life. Additionally, hope is essential to academic accomplishment. Research proves that students who have high hopes get decent scores and examinations. Hope is directly related to motivation. Through this blog post, they explore those reasons, and we'll talk through those today. I guess, 
you know, one of my questions here with regard to hope, or maybe what we should be thinking about here, is how do we properly use hope in our lives? I can tell you that I can relate to what we talked about in the second segment, where hope could lead to helplessness. But I also can tell you in my life that if I, when I don't have hope, that I do struggle, that I do, tr it's hard to find motivation. And so here it's important for us to look at the correlation to motivation. And to me, motivation hasn't been about a song, an anthem, somebody pumping you up and getting you excited about doing something. But to me, motivation is helping you understand clarity, gaining context, and formulating the path, the journey in your own mind. And once that path is clear in your mind, absolutely anything is possible because you own that path. You know the steps. And when you know the steps of what to do and have confidence that those steps are going to help you get to your goal, what better motivation is there than that? All you need to do is follow those steps. Hope can help protect us from big disasters. Whenever something or negative appears in our lives, our brain immediately thinks about the worst case scenario. Meanwhile, hope is the only thing that keeps us on track and stops those negative emotions. The author says it sets opportunities for growth. We all know that life is about the ups and the downs, and it's hope that keeps us in the game. I think that's true. When you lose hope, why continue with something? When things are helpless or hopeless, you don't want to continue. Reduce fear. Hope reduces fear and provides strength in return, which has already been proven in various studies. Means whenever you feel fear, hope is that everything is going to be okay and you are going to make it. I think to experience, when you experience a new situation and you've not been through it before, that fear can keep you from moving forward and having hope or knowing that you're going to get out of that okay can help you. The next one is helps you achieve your goals. When you aim for your goals, you hope that one day you're going to be able to achieve your goals. That kind of ties into what I was talking about, putting together that journey, that map in your head, those steps you need to take. Help. Number five is fosters beliefs. Hope is the only thing which will let you live your life on your terms and always help you to achieve more and more. And I like that. Let's live on our terms. Let's do what we want to do in life. Let's accomplish our goals and our objectives. Let's help make life the best life we can for us. And in turn, we can help those around us. We shut down without hope. Hope can be a powerful therapy. Maintain a sense of humor. Bring success, help, maintain social relationships. So according to Ayushi, there's lots of reasons why we need to have hope and all the benefits. Hanging on to positive expectations. You're listening to my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about what you can do when all hope is lost. We'll be right back. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. 
Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. And tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. And if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, On My Strategy Radio Show, we focus on personal development. Our shows are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. This episode, we've been talking about finding hope in times of doubt, how hopelessness can make it difficult to change. However, hope does have some downsides, but with all the benefits of being hopeful, we don't want to not have hope. And in this segment, I want to talk about what we can do when all hope is lost. What do we do when all hope is lost? Got an article here by Leon Ho says, are you in a situation in life where you feel the odds are against you and all hope is lost? Congratulations, you're not alone. And I think that this is something that I referred to a little bit earlier in the show. You know, think about the past year and a half or so. Have you felt helpless or hopeless over the past year? What are the things that you are doing? dealing with? What are the aspects of your life that you feel you cannot control? I think this year has been one of those years, unlike any other, and by this year, I don't mean 2021, I mean over the past you know year and a half or so. But so many things have come up that it's it, it's almost just a comedy of errors, in, in my opinion. You know, we had the pandemic. We had major fires in my area where the air quality got so bad that it was the worst in the world. There's been so many things that have come up that it's been easy to lose hope. It's been easy to get to a point where you feel helpless, where you feel that you are trapped, where you are controlled. And if you recall, in our first segment, we talked about some of the experiments that were done with animals and how these animals had learned helplessness when they were subjected to extremely difficult situations that they could not control, they stopped trying to escape, they became passive. And that's happening to us today. And I can tell you that if you want to grow in your personal development, you cannot remain passive. Whatever's happened to you over the past year and a half, odds are that that has taken you to a new realization, a new normal in your life. My guess is, and this is speaking from personal experience, that you are a different person than you were a year and a half ago. Perhaps you're more cautious. You're more passive. 
you're less outgoing. You're not doing the things that you wanted to do or had done in the past. You're like that animal that has been put in a cage and the chain reduced, 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 reduced to the point where you are sitting there next to the pole that you are tied to and you have lost hope. Well, I think it's important for us to realize that as human beings, we always should have hope. We are resilient beings. We have the ability to take our the things that are happening in our lives learn from them and use them to help us get to a, another state, a future state, one that is better for us. Leon says things can happen in life where you suddenly find yourself on the downside of hope. Could be the loss of someone dear to you, something dear to you, a circumstance that is too much to bear, some things that are not working out, a phase where you've gotten stuck and cannot see any clear path forward. The feeling that you are all by yourself or a total loss of interest in living. No matter what you've gone through or going through, you can get over your current circumstances and the beam with a ray of hope again, you will find in this article some useful suggestions. And that's what they are covering today. I am covering today is are these useful suggestions because at the end of the day, there's no one formula that's going to work for all of us. I don't know your circumstances. You don't know my circumstances. So we can talk about strategies, tactics that might have worked for others, apply them to our lives if they are applicable, right? We always want to assess to determine if it is something that we should be implementing and then implement it. it says here man cannot live 40 days without food three days without water eight minutes without wear air but only one second without hope so number one hope produces the courage required to face life challenges i would say yes that is true Without hope, we do not have the courage. We are like that chained animal that has succumbed to sitting in our crate, tied to that pole out in the yard with a short chain on it. We have lost hope. And because this show is about personal development and is about growth and it's about you becoming who you want to be, I can't have you being that chained animal. You have to have hope. You have to be confident that something is going to happen. Hope is optimistic that things will work out. Hope does not give up too soon, and it does not accept defeat. Over the past year, we have all been defeated. I have been defeated. Maybe you have not been defeated, but I can tell you that I have been defeated. And I'm constantly looking for ways to find hope, find that courage to continue on. Hope can help us initiate new strategies. And that's what we are doing here, thinking strategically, and we are acting tactically. But in order for us to think strategically, we need to explore what are those things we can do with regard to hope? How can those courses of actions help us? And then implement those. Hope can help you stay in the game until you do find your focus, express your feelings, find a community, and connect to a larger picture. That's all for this segment. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how you can receive and rekindle your hope. We'll be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, 
details and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. And tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop. Empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. Today we've been talking about hope and finding hope in times of doubt. We've been talking about hope, hopelessness, and uh, trying to figure out what our strategy should be. Right before the break, we were talking about what can we do when all hope is lost. And I had said that um, I've, I've come across that um, situation over the past year and a half or so where you do lose hope. But I've done what I can to get past that. And hopefully we can help you today find some strategies to help you Continue your personal development plan to help you continue to grow, because at the end of the day, there's no reason why any of us shouldn't have an absolutely wonderful, fantastic, fulfilling life with reduced stress, feeling hopeful and optimistic that life is going to give us what we want, that we will get what we deserve out of it. So in this segment, we're going to be talking about how to receive and rekindle that hope. Hope is an article. Hope is the life force that keeps us going and gives us something to live for. Hope is a crucial part of dealing with life's problems and maintaining resilience in the face of obstacles. Even a glimmer of hope that our situation will turn around can help keep us going. Though, when we begin to lose hope, things can seem bleak. We constantly run into resistance and prevent us from reaching our goals. We can start to feel like there is nothing to live for. If we can't get to where we want to go, to be, and don't feel in control of our life, what is the point? What is the point? If you or someone else is feeling apathetic and tired of running in the rat race of life, life, You may start to lose hope. In order to open up your new and fulfilling possibilities for your future, you may need to nurture hope. And this is, there's an adaptation here from the book, The Psychology of Hope by C.R. Schneider. So that's where we're getting this information. But I think this is extremely pertinent. Have you felt apathetic? Have you felt like you are not in control of your life? Have you felt that you are being told to do things that normally you nor- you would not do. And I think that all of the things that are going on are going to beat us down. They are going to get us to a point where we do not have hope anymore. As we work on our personal development, as we build for the future, as we look at that future state, that to-be state, Who we will be, we need hope. There's downsides to hope and helplessness, but at the end of the day, I'm telling you, I need hope. 
Now, it needs to be measured. I need to be realistic about it. I need to know and set proper expectations, but I can't live without hope. And I don't think you should try and live without hope either. In fact, lacking hope from the beginning, if we experience neglect and we're never nourished as a child, we may never have developed a healthy level of hopeful thinking. We might not have the confidence and resilience set in place and simply struggle when things prevent us from achieving our goals. Well, I'm here today to tell you that even if that did happen to you, you're a smart person, you've got a great brain uh, in your head, and you have the ability to start to reshape how you think, rewire those neural connections. Because if you don't, it can have some devastating consequences. Loss of connections. When we experience loss over time, we start to feel hopeless. Loss can come from divorce, death, change. We also experience loss of intangibles in our job or other important aspects of our identity. When we hold on and wallow in our grief from these losses, hopelessness can set in. Awareness. I want you to be aware today that you have been through unforeseen circumstances over the past year and a half. This loss of connection is going to impact you, and this is one of those reasons why hope is important for you today. Victimization. When we are abused and belittled, we can start to believe that this is how life is supposed to be. We can begin to feel that we don't have any control over what happens to us and that bad things will always occur, always occur. This can relate to unfair treatment from prejudice and discrimination. Don't be the victim. Don't be the victim because at the end of the day, at some point, everybody has not had things fairly happen to them in life. It doesn't matter who you are, what you came from, where you came from. There has been some unfairness in life. Don't play the victim. It's not going to help you get where you need to be. As we're developing our personal development strategies, the victim mentality does not work. Burnout. If we don't care for ourselves and we get exhausted and overwhelmed to a point where life seems to run us over, we no longer feel able to manage our responsibilities and we develop a negative and cynical view of the world and others around us. Burnout burnout can lead us to a defeated mentality, a defeated mindset. It's easy to get burned out. Having one thing thrown at you after the other going days, weeks, months without a paycheck, whatever happened, the loss of a loved one, having to wear masks and be social distancing, we've lost our connection. But I don't want you to lose hope. So we want to start thinking about strategies and tips and tricks that we can do to help us gain back that hope. It says here, in much of the research examining hope, a major factor that contributes to our level of hope is the achievement of our goals. When we're able to reach our goals and have a sense of support and validation, that is what is going to instill hope. Success begets success. Little successes that you can do on a daily basis give you the confidence so that you can start to focus on bigger goals, bigger objectives. That is going to help you reach larger milestones. It is going to help you complete bigger goals. This means that we need to prioritize our goals. We need to set SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, actionable, realistic or relevant, time-bound. We need to start thinking about ways that we can move past this. I think in closing this segment, my advice to you is stick to our plans. Stick to what we are doing with regard to our personal development, the five steps that we talk about every week. And if you can do that, you're going to be in a much better position. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're going to take a quick break, and we come back. We're going to help you put your plan in place. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... 
I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am John M. Hawkins. The show is called My Strategy. Well, in case you've missed this broadcast, uh, you can listen on iHeartRadio, Apple, iTunes, or many of the other digital platforms. You can find this uh, show in podcast format. And if you'd like to have something covered in the show, send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or you can pick up the phone and give us a call at 844-MY-STRATEGY. I guess you don't just need to pick up the phone, but you can uh, get a hold of us through that phone number. And in this episode, we've been talking about finding hope in times of doubt, hopelessness can make it very difficult for us to take steps towards change. We learn that animals subjected to difficult situations which they cannot control become passive. Apathy or hopelessness sets in. It can become puzzling and it impacts the animals and our lives as well. It can impact us trying to find a job, make friends, eating healthier. And people without hope become passive and stop trying. And that's what's happened over the past year and a half or so. But there are downsides of hope. Having hope can lead to a defeatist attitude. It can lead to hopelessness. Hope is inherently biased. It sets us up for disappointment and defeat, hampers us from preparing for the negative, can be seen as wishful thinking, encouraging you to forfeit personal power and control, a tone of self-deception. You might be labeled a dreamer, but that aside, hope does have many benefits for us. Hope gives us the ability to deal with big disasters. It helps us identify opportunities for our growth, helps reduce the fear, helps us achieve our goals, foster the belief that there is life when there is hope. There is life when there is hope. If we do not have hope, yes, it can lead to hopelessness, which is a downside. But if you do not have hope, we shut down. We have to have some sort of hope, measured hope. But what can we do when all hope is lost? It's important for us to know the hows and the whys of hope and how it can help us live a full and meaningful life. You have to believe that being hopeful is going to help you achieve your goals. You have to believe that having that hope in your life is going to set you on a path for success. Having that hope in life is going to help you be courageous, and it is going to help you face all of those life challenges that have been set before you over and most importantly, the past year and a half, but your entire life. But I don't want you just to be somebody 
who doesn't have hope, who's defeated, who's that caged animal, who's that animal out in the yard with a chain that has been shrunk from many links down to one link and becomes passive. That is not who you are, and that is not why you are here. I want you to know that you can rekindle your hope. You can express your feelings, find a community who is that is hopeful. Think about the bigger picture. What is the bigger picture for you? What is the larger purpose for you in your life? There is a goal, there is a job, a role, a purpose for you out there. And no one else is going to be able to find it except you. Know that it exists. And this week, think about that. What is my purpose? What am I here on this planet to do? There are you've and you've had so much preparation. I know you've had success. There have been memorable moments in your life where you've done some amazing things. There are things that you have done where you have made a difference. There are plenty of ways that we can find strategies, mentors, those who have had success. Watch a movie, read biographies. Find a person to pattern your success after. Is there someone who was hopeless and couldn't achieve what they needed to do, but somehow they found hope, they found the light, they found the strength then to put together a plan that gave them clarity, that gave them the ability to take one step, then another step, and finally they took the steps they needed to achieve that objective. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find our plan and make sure that that plan is something that we can do. Now, talking about it and implementing it are two different things. So we've talked about hope and what it can do for you. But in reality, we need to identify these patterns, these habits that we have been doing that have been keeping us from being hopeful. We then need to consciously prioritize and make commitments to new goals because in creating these new goals, in setting up these new tasks and objectives that we want to go after, that is what is going to help us get to this success. But it all comes down to creating that visual in your mind, that clarity of what it is that you need to do to be successful. For you to have that hope, to accomplish that goal, and you know how to do it. You've had success in the past. I know you know how to do it. But sometimes we end up in a situation where we are hopeless, where we do not have those things. And so right now, today, I want you to think about everything that's happened over the past year and a half. And I want you to realize that there is hope. There is something that you can do and you can find positive out of it. And once you've accepted that, the rest becomes easy. Now, it's not going to be you know, instantaneous. It is a process. But over time, you are going to be able to gain that clarity and help accomplish those goals. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you on this Saturday. I hope you have a great and hopeful week. We'll see you next time. Take care. This has been My Strategy with your host, John M. Hawkins. Listen each week as John reminds us that just like elite athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of their coaches, he is here to help you achieve your highest goals possible. Here each week on My Strategy. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.